Well, it is week number 15 of the 2024 Baking Challenge and whoopie pies, that is. We're making classic chocolate whoopie pies. Now, I know that this is like kind of a throwback retro recipe, but I can honestly say I don't remember ever eating a whoopie pie in my entire life. I did not pick this recipe out. Malcolm picked this recipe out. So, um, but we're all excited to try it. So get your ingredients and let's get baking. This seems like a pretty straightforward recipe. We're basically making two, I mean, a batch of cakey cookies and we're gonna put some filling in between and slap them together and whoopie pies. So, um, yeah, I actually have my iPad charged today, so I'm going to be looking at this recipe a lot because I want to make sure I don't make any crazy mistakes. Um, if you're new here, I can promise you a few things. Um, we're baking on a budget, so I'm going to cut those costs if I can. There's a few recipes down the line that may require some ingredients that you're going to have to maybe order online, but those are few and far between. If you can get store brand, get store brand. We love store brand here. The second thing is that I will be altering some of these recipes. I have a long list of food allergies and the kiddo's kind of a picky eater. So sometimes I'm gonna make those changes, but you don't have to make those changes. You can just follow the recipe. The third thing is that if I can cut corners, I am going to cut corners. I don't like hard work. So if we can use a kitchen device to shred butter or do whatever we need to do, that's the route that I'm gonna take. And the last thing I can promise you is that I'm gonna make a ton of mistakes because I am not a professional baker. I'm just a human being. I'm having fun. I'm hopefully getting tasty treats and maybe you will too. So having said that, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is preheat to 350 degrees. And make sure that there's nothing in your oven when you do that. Not that I've done that before, but I know certain people that have, and that's okay. All right, we're gonna start off by making the cake. Now you're gonna wanna have these ingredients out ahead of time. Eight tablespoons of butter, that's an entire stick of butter. You're gonna want a room temperature egg. And if I have to put eggs out, I put them in a bowl or like a muffin tin. Um, that way they don't end up rolling off the counter if somebody walks by. And a whole cup of milk. And all of these ingredients need to be room temperature. Oh, it kind of grosses me out, but that's okay. So we're gonna start by putting our butter. Let me grab a spatula. I'm very well prepared today. Um, you know, I do make these videos a little bit ahead of time and I was hoping to get these done earlier because I was going to, um, make them eclipse because today was the eclipse. It's done now. Um, but it was really cool. We weren't in the path of totality this time. Hang on a minute. Let me throw this away, but that's okay because we still got to experience some cool things. All right. We put our butter in, our sugar. That is one whole cup packed of light or dark brown sugar. Now you'll see in this bowl here, I also have my teaspoon of espresso powder. I know that it says that the espresso powder is optional, but if you have it, you don't want to skip it. What did I do with my espresso powder? It's around here somewhere. I get, um, I have a bag from Amazon from Anthony's. I'll actually put that link below because that stuff is amazing and I add it to pretty much everything now. In addition to that, you are going to need a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda and three fourths of a tablespoon of salt. And I put all of that right here. So I'm gonna just slide that in there, raise my bowl up and get that cranking. Um, oh, and a teaspoon of vanilla. We're gonna beat this until it's all smooth. There we go, teaspoon of vanilla. When do we add the milk? Oh, after the cocoa? Yeah, after the flour. Okay, so 
texture. Like, texture's gonna be kind of a big deal here. Already added that. If I've added it, I'm trying to move it out of the way. <laughs> so once this gets all encompassed together, then we're going to add our egg and we're gonna keep beating that until the egg is incorporated, okay? Once that's done, we're gonna add the cocoa powder that I failed to get out somehow. How did I do that? I don't know how I did that. Let me grab the cocoa powder out. I'm so very well organized. Cocoa powder. Yeah. There we go. So I have some butter that is sticking up on the side. I'm just gonna stop my mixer and scrape this all down. I am really excited about this. I think I'm on like a baking high after the bagels that we made last week because those tasted so good. Um, but I'm really crossing my fingers that this is another simple one that's gonna turn out great. And I will tell you that some of y'all had bagels that looked professional and I loved seeing the photos over on Facebook. That made me so happy. They were much better looking than my bagels. Okay, that is all nice and mixed together. Now we're gonna add the egg. Um, I don't, I do not refuse, absolutely 100% refuse to, um, to crack eggs into whatever I'm baking. I won't do it. Also, I'm really bad at cracking eggs, so I always make a mess, so I always do it over by the sink. So, and I got it all over myself. I'm very envious of the people that can crack eggs with one hand. I can't do that. Never been able to. I've tried it a few times. It just ends up as a complete and total mess. So, all right, I'm gonna get that egg going. Put this up. Ugh. So gross. Let's see. I think we need a little bit more speed on this. We'll get there. I'm gonna scrape the sides again, and I can tell you that this smells really great. That espresso powder is really making it all pop, which I love so much. I love espresso powder. I will not drink coffee. I will not drink espresso, but Espresso powder is magical. <laughs> it's a magical flavor enhancer. And I love that. There we go. All right, my egg is almost incorporated. So we're gonna add the cocoa next. And what do we need? Cocoa powder is gonna be one half of a cup of cocoa powder. Where is my, oh, here it is. Half a cup of cocoa powder. And it says to stir in, so I'm gonna reduce my speed just a little here. I'm gonna, most mixers do have a setting that is just for stirring. I'm gonna use that later. So if it does say to stir it in, you can do it by hand or you're gonna want your mixer on the lowest setting. Sometimes if you go a little too hard with this, you're gonna get a lot of air, um, things like that. It could become a, a texture problem. Yes, I'm absolutely caffeinating. I don't know how Scott manages to sleep through the ruckus that is the early morning cat hours. Um, but it is practically impossible for me. And the tabby cat woke me up at 3 a.m. Usually it's four o'clock, which is fine. I don't mind that, but 3 a.m. is a little early for me. I did go back to sleep, but that's okay. That's okay. Oh, to be able to sleep like my husband does. 
That would be amazing. <laughs> okay, now it's getting all worked in. I love that. And again, I still smell the espresso powder. It smells so good. All right, add the flour to the batter alternate, alternately with milk. So we're gonna take turns here. Ooh, all-purpose flour and just refilled. So how much all-purpose flour do we need? We need two and one-third cups of all-purpose flour. Let me take my, this duster that I have is such an amazing little thing. Uh, I just leave it in here all the time. I wash it after I use it a couple times. All right, I'm gonna add my one third first. And I am, I just have it on stir. And then I'm gonna add just a dash of milk. But you know what, I know if I go to pour this, it's gonna make a mess. So maybe I'll just spoon it out and add a little bit of it at a time, because I will, I'll spill most of the milk. That's just how graceful I am. But this way, this way I can just add a little bit at a time and it'll be fine. So remember, your milk, your eggs, and your butter should all be room temperature. Um, so get it out ahead of time. It's not gonna go bad, it'll be fine. Okay, this is where I start getting into trouble because I have to count. And um, I know that I have a one third measuring cup here. I need two cups of flour, so I will have to move six cups. So I'm gonna use my twisty tie method here. One, two, three, four, five, six, there we go. This is my ADHD baking tip right here. Every time I spoon one of my measurements in, I move a twisty tie over here. So it's not infallible, but it's better than nothing. Okay, and then I'm gonna spoon some milk in. I'm just eyeballing it at this point. This smells so good. Um, yes, please. It is a very thick, cakey kind of batter. I like this. All right, here we go. Number two. Twisty tie. Over. And then stir in some more milk. We'll have to stop and scrape the sides here in just a second. So I do have some flour that is sticking. Let's go ahead and do that now. I also think that I need to adjust the, um, maybe it's the tilt head ones that you can do it on, but I really feel like sometimes my paddle is not getting to the bottom of the bowl. So make sure that you are scraping the sides and the bottom to make sure that you have everything getting mixed up. Nothing left behind. No baking ingredients left behind. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, here we go. Yeah, sometimes you can just sift it back and forth. And honestly, a lot of times, if you just add your flour slower, it's not gonna cling to the sides like that. But I'm kinda, I'm a little blase about all of it. Two more measuring cups of flour left. It smells so good, you guys. 
Sounds like my oven just preheated all the way. Next one. Good enough. I would say that this is almost like a, a thick fudgy brownie instead of a cake kind of batter. But I know that'll change here. Last measuring cup. All right. And again, I'm just dumping it because I lack patience. And there goes the rest of the milk. I am glad I have this on a slow setting because that just went everywhere. I can't imagine what it would have looked like if I had had it on a fast setting. Let me put my counters back. All right. Let's scrape the sides here. I swear if baking wasn't such hard work, then I would love to open up a bakery. But it is hard work and physically demanding too. It is not cut out for my lifestyle. <laughs> All right. All right, let's get the last bit of mixing done. See what we're supposed to do next. Okay, next up we are going to be dropping the dough by one fourth cupfuls onto our prepared pan. And you can grease a cookie sheet or you can put down parchment paper. I'll tell you I'm putting down parchment paper. So, I guess I didn't need my one cup after all. Oh, that was loud. And I don't need my muffin tin anymore. Do a little bit of cleanup here. Well, that looks pretty well mixed to me. All right. Let me grab the first baking sheet. I'm almost out of parchment paper in this roll, which is fine. I have a couple other boxes of it in the pantry. There we go. Okay. Let me take this off. So, did anybody get to watch the eclipse? Where were you watching it from? I know I had a lot of Missouri friends that were trying to make it south and just couldn't get there because traffic was so bad. Um, we had talked about driving further south, taking a couple hours um, because parts of southern Missouri were in totality. And we decided not to. We decided to stay home. Um, and it was fine. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll take a trip to Alaska for the next one. I think that's in seven or nine years, something like that. Okay. Now this does say to leave plenty of room in between the cakes because they'll spread. A muffin scoop works well here. Well, I wish they had said that. I wish I had read that earlier. Um, I kind of stopped reading ahead. Let's see here. Muffin scoop, muffin scoop. That's a little too small. That's a little too big. Ha! Goldilocks found the right scoop. Yeah, that looks muffin scoop. So I'm not going to put this in the sink, though, because <laughs> I might end up needing that one. Okay. And be careful because they'll spread. I wish it says how far apart it needs to be because they don't tell me that. Now this does make, what did I say? Eight to, 
eight or 16 small pies. If you're doing eight, then you'll need 16 of these. If you're doing 16, then you'll need um, 32. Because remember, we've got one for each side. I feel like mine are gonna be a little big, um, but I'm, I'm engaged now. We're, we are in it to win it here. <laughs> These are a little wonky. I'm gonna do some slightly smaller ones in the middle. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, it does say that these will go into the oven for 15 to 16 minutes until they're set and firm to the touch. They're going to be removed from the oven. We're going to cool them on the pans. And then while they're still lukewarm, so not hot, just lukewarm, you're going to use a spatula to peel them off of the parchment paper. Um, you can put them on a cooling rack, I guess. It doesn't say to do that, but you're definitely going to want to separate them from the paper and then allow them to cool completely, okay? So I'm going to get through this first pan and uh, see how far they spread. Um, and then I'll see you back in about 20 minutes. Okay, so mine did spread. Um, so you're gonna wanna space yours out a little more or make them a little smaller. But, oh my gosh, they smell so good. I just put the next batch in. About 10 minutes, I'm gonna check. And see, they're, they're firm. They're not, they're not soft. I mean, I could probably, you know, leave a dent if I wanted to, but I'm being very careful. So these were in for 15 minutes and I'm gonna call them good. They're kind of springy on the top, but definitely firm. Okay, all of my cookies are done. Cakes, cakes, I guess they're cakes. All of my cakes are done. They've completely cooled. I'm gonna go ahead and make my frosting. You can make this ahead of time if you want. I chose to wait until everything was cooled down. So it's a cup of shortening. And I know that a lot of people really don't like shortening. You can, um, look into alternatives, but I don't really know of, I mean, maybe butter, but I would think that butter would get weird. Um, so anyway, it is a cup of shortening and my full cups are in the um, dishwasher. So I'm using half cups. And the way that I do shortening, because it's kind of a pain to measure out, you could dip it, but I don't like getting my, I don't like getting it on my hands. It's, it's gross. Vegetable shortening is just gross, but it's a staple in things like buttercream, icing and stuff like that. So what I do is I use a knife and I just start glooping it on there and I press it down once I get it full. I kind of press and then remove the excess. And then I take my, uh, I take my knife in around the edge and scoop it out and that is a full half cup because I've pressed it down. Okay, and then we have one more of these. I think I'm more worried about measuring out the marshmallow fluff. I feel like that's gonna be really messy. Um, you can make your own marshmallow fluff. King Arthur has a recipe for that. I am not gonna do that because honestly, this container of marshmallow fluff was cheap and uh, cheap and easy. So that's what I'm going with. Um, the whole kitchen smells like chocolate cake. I say that as a question because it's cake but it's in a delightful cookie shape and I love that. And I was talking to Scott earlier and he was uh, questioning the difference between a moon pie and a whoopie pie. And it seems like one is a graham cracker uh, that's encased in 
um, chocolate, and then you have cake. So this one is the cake. The whoopie pie is the cake. The moon pie is the graham cracker. And honestly, I don't remember ever eating either one as a child or as an adult. So clearly I'm deprived. So shortening, that's one cup of shortening, one cup of powdered sugar. This is gonna get messy. one half and one cup. There we go. Try not to get it everywhere. Fantastic. Ooh, okay, what's next? Okay, and the marshmallow. So one and three fourths of a cup or 164 grams. This is 198, so that's considerably more um, I have my third measuring cup here, so I'm just gonna, maybe this won't be so bad. <laughs> Marshmallows are gooey and messy and tasty, but messy. We all know how I feel about ooey gooey mess. So, okay, <laughs> switch hands. That's one. That is going to be two, um, goodness, we don't, I don't think we have too many, this is three, I don't think we have too many recipes that have much to do with marshmallow planned. So I do have all of these recipes planned out, you guys. That's what I, I had sinus surgery in October, and that's what I spent my recovery doing, was going over the entire website and finding things that I wanted to make. Um, and so far, we've just had one substitution. So the bagels were actually a substitution, um, because what I had originally wanted to bake that day was something that was going to be like a laminated dough with a ton of butter and it was really really labor intensive and I was not feeling it so at the last minute I substituted the bagels which was great because I always wanted to make bagels and my mom helped me pick that recipe too I was kind of going over options with her and she said absolutely do the bagels and it was the right call um, laminating dough, I think that's what they call it, um, like croissants and, and things like that, you're basically folding your dough over and over and over with butter. And it seems, if you don't have like a, a sheeter or a laminator, it seems very labor intensive to me. Hmm, that is good marshmallow. Okay, up we go, and let's... Get this going. <laughs> oh, it just smells like sugar. Okay, the other thing you're gonna wanna do is you are going to want to take a fourth of a teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of water, and you're gonna dissolve that salt into the water. I don't know what the reasoning is behind this, um, but I'm going to follow directions. It's very lumpy, um, but it says it needs to be well combined. So I think I might turn my speed up here just a little. Almost there. I actually need to scrape the sides a little bit here. Definitely need to scrape the sides. Um, I will say I'm very impressed with how my cookies came out. They look really good. They are not all uniform, but good enough. Scrape the sides off. This is definitely, 
definitely a lot. <laughs> Ooh, it's hard to work with. Right, just a little bit higher here. Okay, now I'm going to turn it down to a stir because I'm going to go ahead and add the salt mixture in. So I don't know if anybody has a theory as to why we're adding salt water um, to this mixture. I would love to hear it. It's, the water just kind of seems to be like sitting on the top. And we're supposed to incorporate this in and then add the vanilla, which is a teaspoon and a half. Teaspoon and a half. What do I have? I have one teaspoon here. That's my one. Oh, that's two. Oops. Oh, well. And then I'm going to kick this up because my vanilla is just kind of sitting there on top too. So it says that we have to beat this until smooth. Yeah. Oh, okay. Higher speeds are getting the job done. I am going to, I'm going to stop though and scrape the sides down. I don't know what that noise was. Um, but yeah, scrape the sides down and then just a little bit more, I think, and it'll be all mixed up. That's it. It's done. Okay. Pull this off. So it is a very fluffy mixture. It doesn't seem to be very um, sticky anymore from the marshmallow. Okay. I'm going to grab two cakes from over here. are so fun. Um, and it says to spoon your mixture on to one cake. How do how they put spread the flat side of half a cake with the filling? Okay. I would probably, if I wanted this to look nice, like if I were going to be taking these somewhere and maybe sharing them, um, I would probably use like a piping bag for this. It doesn't say how much filling, so I put a liberal amount on and then top with another cookie. And there you have it. There is our classic chocolate whoopie pie. <laughs> now repeat this process with all the pies that you made. I ended up making 18 sides, so that's going to give me nine pies. Um, and the second batch was a little more spread out, so I was able to not have them overflowing into each other. So finish making your sandwiches, and then let's see how they taste. Okay, moment of truth. Was this worth destroying my kitchen for? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. This is good. This is like really, really good. Um, the chocolate has a light flavor, which I don't know how that's possible. Um, but it's a, oh my gosh, how do I even describe this? It's very rich. It's light while being rich at the same time. And that's probably the espresso powder, but um, <laughs> this is a winning recipe and I'm so glad that we tried this. Malcolm picked a good one and I cannot wait for him to try these. Um, he does not like to be on film, so I will not be filming that part, but I will let you know in the description below if he liked it as well. He can have one of these after dinner. I'm going to go finish this off and clean the kitchen because it's quite the mess. I hope that you had the chance to bake along. I hope that your classic 
chocolate whoopie pies turned out amazing. Uh, leave me a note below if you tried it and what you think. Um, if you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button and follow along. I put out a new video every single Saturday where we're trying a brand new recipe. If you want to bake along, you can go over to the Facebook page and follow there as well because every Wednesday morning, I'm gonna release the ingredient list for what we'll be baking that weekend. That way you can decide if you wanna give it a try and you can get your shopping done in time. So I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of this whoopie pie and I will see you next week. Now, the recipe does say that if you're not gonna serve these right away, you should wrap them individually in plastic wrap um, until you're ready to serve. It doesn't say that you should stick them in the fridge, but I kind of feel like you should stick them in the fridge. Although maybe not, because it's got shortening vanilla and marshmallow cream, so it should be fine. Just, I wouldn't put it anywhere warm. <laughs> So, so individually wrap in plastic wrap until you're ready to serve. Mm -hmm.